So we have to remember to make sure that we wax the distal cusp a little bit larger than the mesial. Now sometimes you have different shaped teeth so some people may have smaller or larger mesial cusp so we just have to kind of go by what the patient has but as an ideal tooth we want that mesial cusp almost non-existent also it's the same thing on the mesial slope of the cusp it's a tiny bit shorter on the second premolar the mesial is even shorter than that so we'll have to take that into account so we'll start the same way as we usually do with the cusp tip we don't want to make it higher than the canine also we have to remember that the lowers the lingual cusps are lower than the buccal cusps they're shorter So the way we know how much shorter is we look at the adjacent teeth and kind of imagine that curve of speed. And kind of line it up with that curve, that imaginary curve. So we have the cusp ridges, we have the point angles, we have the uh, cusp tip, now we go for the line angles. <coughs> Now we go for the height of contour on the gingival. Once this solidified, <coughs> we're gonna go for the uh, central lobe on the buckle. Puddle in the uh, developmental depressions on the buckle, make things a little even. Then we look at it from the labial view to make sure they line up right with the uh, posterior teeth. So here is a little bit leaning in too much. So we want to line it up with the ridges on the second premolar. So let's bring it out a little bit.
so we don't want to make it too much higher just bring it out more to the facial once we reach the facial then we have to correct from the buckle here Buckle on the mesial, then we puddle it in a little bit and double check it again, make sure it's out further. Once this is out, then we start doing the lingual, and this is when we have to remember. that the distal cusp is the larger cusp now even though here it looks like it's a mesial cusp but it's really not it's really a distal cusp except that the triangular groove here kind of breaks through the ridge and this is where it comes in what I told you before that not every single first premolar looks exactly the same so we have to remember that so just kind of go by what you see on the other side but you still have to remember the ideal positioning of each cusp because if you don't have anything to go by like if this patient would have a missing premolar on the other side then you have to know its ideal shape so that you could have a starting point then once you waxed it in the ideal position you can adjust it according to whatever teeth you have left okay so we're kind of going by the height of the adjacent mesial cusp there right here so the next thing we do it's the tiny little cusp slash marginal ridge on the mesial portion of the tooth. So now once we did that we kind of have a fish mouth or pseudo fish mouth which later on we're going to open up but uh, we have to cut through here first so we don't hurt or other wax up when we remove it but first we're going to fill in the lingual to make everything stronger and get the general shape of the tooth So we take the little saw and we're going to saw it through here. Then remove it. And we have quite a bit to chop away from, so we're going to fix these up. take off the extreme parts that are like really large and then I'll take this and 
We'll puddle in all the areas that are hollow. And while we wait for this to cool, we're going to open up the fish mouth a bit so we can have some space to put our little ridges and grooves. to make sure that all your margins are perfect so that the teeth doesn't keep popping out every time you try to put it back and they will keep popping out if this area is not carved down to where it's supposed to be Oops, popped off. Let's clean this up a little bit more and then we'll uh, melt the wax real well to stick it right to the dye. Sometimes you can push it straight down before it kind of solidifies. That way you can squeeze out some of that wax that you don't need. Okay. And then we'll just scrape that away. This way we have a kind of an idea of how much to uh, take off. Yeah. Broke it. We're going to have to put some more wax there. It's no big deal. It's good that it happens this way. You can see that it's no big deal. You can just add some more wax, melt the wax real well to the dye. Add a little bit more here. And we wait for that to cool down. And meanwhile, very gently, we start carving the other side just so we can save some time. Let me put 
we should back down and we re-add the distal lingual cusp that I said so much about before and we're gonna go add a little bit to the mesiolingual This time we'll wait a little bit longer before we start playing with it, so we don't break it again. Okay, so it's kind of a, an odd looking little tooth. It's kind of a weird position too. So let's just slowly start shaping this up. Gotta remember that the mesial slope is a little bit shorter. So that means that the cusp tips slightly to the mesial. And the distal slope of the cusp, or the distal cusp ridge, is a tiny bit longer. Not too much longer, just a little bit. I'll make sure I get a contact there. It's a tiny tooth, so the contact will pretty be pretty small. So just try not to make it a um, point contact. You want to make it a contact area. So we look at it again to make sure that we have the right height for the cusp. It's just about maybe it can be a little bit taller. So let's add a little bit to the height. We could probably add a little bit to that canine too. Looks like it's a little bit short. it up a little bit. Whenever you add to the cusp tips, sometimes you get like a little mark there, which we'll have to blend together. So we heat up the wax, add a tiny bit to the tip, and there we go. It's fixed up. So, the next step is the mesial marginal ridge. Remember, we go to the center and we make a teardrop shape. So, the bottom will be a little wider and the top will be narrower. just like that. Next one is going to be much smaller and it will be the distolingual marginal, distolingual um, triangular ridge. But this will be very tiny. It will almost have no 
like real <coughs> delineations of it. The only delineation we'll have here is the um, the lingual developmental groove, which will be positioned slightly to the mesial, since we have the distal the distolingual cusp so small. So we can make a secondary ridge right here, since we have the room. And the secondary ridge on the distal right there. Very tiny. You don't need much. So once we did that, we puddle it in very carefully so that we make a uh, little depression. Like that. Like that. Like that. And like that. So that's our buckle cusp right there now we're gonna do the same to the lingual cusp we're gonna do a little bit of a puddling right here we're gonna add a tiny bit of wax right there <coughs> to make a slight definition to the mesiolingual cusp of the first premolar just like that I'll make sure I get my uh, embrasures, buckle embrasures right here, you see, curvatures, buckle embrasures. We need <coughs> occlusal embrasures right here and right there. We need contact areas, which one, which this could use some. So, but I'm going to add to the canine instead because I think the canine is on the small side, so it could stand to be a little bit wider. So we'll add a little contact area there. I'm gonna smooth out the distal lobe a little bit. So you don't always have to add to the tooth that we're working on. You can add to the tooth next to it. Unless, of course, you have uh, the original teeth in, which in this case, the point is moot. <coughs> Do a little bit more shaping in the buckle. Some smoothing. And we're going to do a little bit of a um, refining of the central groove and the pits. Like I said before, do not bring these grooves all the way up to the cusp tip. Just maybe like a third, maybe a halfway up. And that's all we need. If you start making the grooves too long, then the tooth will, st will start looking fake because you kind of mess up the, uh, the roundness that you created with the heat. So then we're going to take it out and make sure our margins are perfect, which it definitely is not. So let's fix it. Only this much is kind of showing because I was kind of taking it away. So this is where.